Oh yeah. When I said earlier about the, the changes, when, when, you, when, people, when clients do come back with changes and you come to an agreement that you are changing the, the deadline or something, if, if it is going to change how long it takes or going to change, or, or there's going to be different budget stuff, get it in writing. Mm -hmm. This may sound like clinical, and I, and I hope, I hope at least up to now, I've been very clear that I'm trying to build a good work relationship. So it's not about holding feet to the fire. It's about up till now, like you do want a good work relationship for everyone involved, but things happen. And one of the most disappointing feelings is when you worked on a project, you felt like it went well, there was some weird disconnect or something went wrong or somebody screwed someone else over by accident. Everyone gets annoyed and leaves on bad terms. And then later on, you hear like from the grapevine that, that history has changed and people are like, oh, well, actually, they, they were massively over time and they didn't do the thing, whatever. Right. And you're like, no, but you, you asked me for two months of extra work in the middle of that project. And then you wondered why the deadline didn't hit. And it's like, that makes you feel horrible. It makes the your whole thing go wrong it's it's better off for you that like and because again people don't even do this on purpose i've worked with clients who afterwards they felt like oh you know you well you said it was going to deliver on time whatever and they kind of well no i don't blame you but i feel disappointed it didn't deliver and then you can say oh well let me just send you this email remember when you said this we did this thing um that was an extra three weeks of work that accounts for whether it was extra time and you know whatever and then like i've had people go oh oh yeah i forgot about that like that's mm. oh yeah sorry like i didn't I, I forgot that like three months ago we gave you complete changes to the original spec and that was going to change the deadline so it's not even often meant as a mean thing it's just it's very easy to have a revisionist view of history when you've got a, a long project and like stuff goes wrong like i've worked on projects that were meant to be split up into like five parts and then it became three parts and then an extra part was added afterwards so by the end of it, it's three parts plus a new part, not the original five parts. And when somebody then looks at it from the top-down view and says, oh, it took this amount of time to do the project, their mind is it took this amount of time to do this project, mm -hmm. not the spec that was originally written for the original project. So if stuff changes drastically, make sure, even if you have a big meeting and everyone's like, oh, it's not going to work. Okay, we're all in agreement. We're now doing this. <laughs> I always say, somebody write it down email it and we'll pass it around. I just want to, I just want history to validate what we've all agreed on. Um, and so just make a point that if there's something going to happen like that, make sure somebody emails somebody. And often, and it's weird to me, this is such an odd thing. This isn't done as much as it should be. Mm. Like, like sometimes people get surprised or affronted or feel like you're sort of saying, why we were agreeing. I said, look, I just, I, I, rather than like explain all of I, what I just said, I normally say, I, you know, Sometimes I forget stuff just for my peace of mind. Can you just write it down and send it to me just so that I have a copy just in case I forget. That's CYA and, man, cover your ass. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it's uh, just, just make it. And, and again, same thing goes in reverse. If you're hiring someone or you're working with people mm -hmm. like it, it'll make your life and their life easier. If there is some accountability for what's going on, just, just make a point of having um, and like Matt highlighted meeting notes is a great one. Like I will, I've started doing that in the last year and it's invaluable i will literally no matter what the meeting it could be just a boring one i will have a notepad and i'll just start mm -hmm. like writing notes and it's probably mostly gibberish but it's just like if something comes up i'll at least remember vaguely that like oh a couple of weeks back because like, like i've worked on stuff where someone said um something something we're working with this person on this thing and i can just like pull up a file and say that was like two weeks ago i was like oh you mean blank from blank it's like yeah that's that person it's like yeah. just to have that name means that it's 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 good to remember these kinds of things and it's like having a mini database for a project it's worth keeping this stuff for multiple reasons i send so many per hour conversation emails per, per our discussion you this is what you want Please let me know if I've, I, and I always frame it like this. Please let me know if I've missed anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's just giving an opportunity to, to, to really just say, Hey, look, we had a conversation, a verbal conversation. We, we touched on a lot of things, agreed on a lot of things. Here's what we talked about it. Did I miss anything? And hopefully it'll trigger them to read it and be like, Oh wait, you misunderstood this. This isn't what I actually wanted, what you've captured here. I mean, it's, it's awful, but I do, I do this a lot during verbal conversations too, uh, where I will say, all right, so let me just, let me stop you. I really want to just summarize what you just said. So you're looking for an app in which the user can search for themselves using their fingerprint. Okay. I just want to let you know that, you know, to do that, we're going to need to leverage an SDK or we're going to have to do this and that. It's just, it, and, and maybe they'll say, well, no, you don't really have to use your fingerprint. They can also just type in their name. Okay. So 
is 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 the fingerprint thing a stretch goal like yeah it, like if it's not that important can we actually push that to the side and focus more on the other stuff and all of a sudden you can like find different requirements of the project it just opens up opportunities to have further yeah. discussion and really understand because on the flip side of that i've had i've oh my gosh could I, I i've had so many times where my bosses come in saying hey you know that feature that we have in the product that is x y and z and you're like no that's not in the product but we talked about it why isn't it in there well, I don't know. We just talked about it. We never formalized anything. We never made tickets about it. We never pushed it to the dev, dev team. Like you just called me up one afternoon on a Friday, like at four thirty, and said, "Wouldn't it be great if our product did this?" And I agreed with you. Like it would be really cool yep. if it did. <laughs> my, but my number one memory of that is literally being in a car with my boss in the front seat, me in the back, and he, and like they're going somewhere, and he's he's in the side seat, and he's like the passenger seat, and I'm in the back, and he's on a call with a client. With like oh, no. a, someone else and he i just remember him saying something something yeah yeah it can totally do that thing and i'm sitting there going no it can't and not only can it not we've not even had a discussion where you've brought up the fact that this has to be a feature and he said yeah yeah we'll, we'll demo it in two weeks and i'm like no. so i guess i've just found out there's a new feature being added in two weeks that i'm making that i'm only finding out about by proxy of a phone call you're having in the front seat but oh, it's like yeah so <laughs> that, that does happen yeah um but you also bring up a very good point with that though i think that's another thing that's really worth mentioning um I've up till now I've avoided a lot of like micro details about how to manage some of this, um, how to like do some of the stuff we talked about, mm. because realistically there are bucks out there. Like you don't need us to tell you in detail how to like do social anything like just you can figure it out um i will say that one of them that you mentioned is very good is summarizing the point is one of the most powerful things you can do because if somebody is, says i want a thing that does x and y and z and whatever if you say well let me just check that i'm understanding you in other words say yeah. i'm repeating it not to again not to like hold you to it but just to make sure that i'm getting what you're saying yeah. you repeat it back to them that has two things one it means you can find those sort of things that are out of odds and two it makes them go oh they're paying attention they're, they are actually listening to what i'm saying <laughs> they're not just like nodding and writing stuff down um so one of the most powerful things you can do when when someone asks you for something is to really do that and just say, okay, let me see. So you're saying you wanted to do X, Y, and Z. And why is that? It's because you, you know, you're you're trying to like get that same feel that this other project has. And it's like, yeah, yeah. So it's that other one, whatever. And what, once you kind of, again, it's, it's more organic than sort of clinical tips to do it. But that idea of repeating back what people are saying is like one of the most powerful things you can do when trying to figure out requirements for a project. Thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to Jennifer Irwin, Christian, Urizer, Alwyn Kuravilla, Umit Sarin, Anton, Mighty Possum, Amar Duranovic, Dustin, Nav from Academy of Games, Usuf Ali Castle, Iron Alex, Trond, Dark Rush Photography, Glasswell Entertainment, and R Star. Thank you.